all right what's going down my good people welcome back to the channel if you knew what's good to you too it is the second edition i did the first edition a couple weeks ago the way too soon mock draft but here we have the updated second version of this mock draft now espn did drop this i think a couple of days ago and I figured some of the names would change and some of the order of the picks would change, even though we don't know anything about the order of the picks, because obviously the lottery hasn't happened yet. But they are going off of ESPN is going off of the um, the percentages or the lottery team's chance to have the first pick and then one through four. So in the WNBA, their picks, their lottery picks are one through four. Then after that, it fills into 12. They have three first uh, three rounds. 12 players, which they really do need to just shorten to two rounds, 12 players. But um, yeah, three rounds, 12 players. But we're going to take a look at the first round. We're going to take a look at the lottery picks. And we're just going to take a look at what what players are going to end up where. This Again, it, it kind of is still way too soon. But knowing that this 2024 season is on its way to ending in October, I think middle of October, might as well take another look at it as the college season college season is i think i think 40 days away now i think it's 40 days away but anyway let me just read y'all this espn article real quick so we're just going to break down i got tankathon's a uh, list pulled up i got espn's list pulled up and i just wanted to pull both these lists up for the players because espn's is different from tankathon's and looking at tankathon's when we did this video a couple weeks ago they had different names on there that i'm seeing now um i want to say they had az fud az fud on there as well but i didn't even see a yoko lee and especially since the las vegas aces lost their 2025 first round pick due to the uh hamby lawsuit and the hamby allegations against las vegas they got their uh they got their what was it i think the eighth or ninth pick taken away from them in the first round so thank god because we can't forget that the aces still have Liz kitley so what the hell they need a first round pick for so good job wmba everyone give it up for the wmba anyway espn's initial wmba mock draft for 2025 the order of picks has not been established the lottery teams in order of odds for the number one pick are the sparks first dallas wings second chicago sky third and mystics fourth okay so the lottery i believe is being held in december so we'll find out in december now Keep in mind that Dallas <clears throat> keep in mind that Dallas owns a pick swap with Chicago via the 2023 Marina, Marina Mabry trade. So if the sky plays higher than the wings in the lottery, they will switch spots. So let's say the odds favor Chicago. Chicago ends up with the third spot in the draft lottery and Dallas ends up in the fourth spot. Dallas ends up in Dallas since they have the pick swap will end up in Chicago's third spot. Now they should clarify this because when they say if the sky plays higher than the wings in the lottery, they'll switch spots. They should have clarified this again because does that mean Dallas is going to end up with two draft picks or are they going to only switch if Chicago ends up higher than them? You get what I'm saying? So that that part is a little bit confusing. But also, the Golden State Valkyries will join the league in 2025 as the league's 13th team. The WNBA has not announced the details of the expansion draft or where the Valkyries will be slotted in the regular draft, which is traditionally in April. They're putting ESPN is going to put the Golden State Valkyries pick after the lottery picks at number five. Now, let me say this. I if the WNBA now there is no bearing. I don't think there is any bearing on what they've what they want to do with the expansion team's picks but as listed here by espn the last two wmba expansion teams chicago in 06 and atlanta dream in 08 drafted number six and number eight in the first round respectively the wmba this is this is where I, i'm wmba need to you know who a little saw like get, get spice things up a little bit if the wmba was on some g shit think about this Golden State Valkyries, and you're probably going to have Paige Beckers going first. Talk to me. Hey, the same way y'all think y'all think it was chance the Spurs got Victor Webinyama. No, it wasn't no chance. If I'm up top, if I'm execs higher ups in the W front office in the W, if I'm up top, president, I'ma say hey. 
We got a new expansion team, and this year we're going to do things a little differently. Get Paige over in Golden State? Come on, WNBA. Talk to me now. Talk to me now. You already got so many guards in L.A. anyway. And I don't think anyone would complain either. Anyone except L.A. But do we really care about L.A. right now? Who is at that fifth spot that could revolutionize that Golden State Valkyrie team? Either way, let's go ahead and get into this mock draft. Let's go ahead and get into the names, okay? So I'm going to read off ESPN's first couple of names. Um, Page Records going number one. And then I'm going to compare it with Tankathons. Um, Y'all know how I feel about Dallas. So we can kind of move past that first pick, Page, Page going to LA. Yeah, UConn. Now, number two, they got Dallas Wings going... Uh, picking up Kiki Ariafin. Now, for Dallas, Natasha Howard is leaving. I also believe, due to the current amount of time that Satu Sabali is spending in New York, and yes, her sister is in the playoffs, I think we've got a good couple of bargaining chips for Satu to come to New York. Um, like I said, I think Courtney Vandersloot is done after this season, so we could put all that money towards somebody like a Satu Sabali. I think Satu comes to New York depending on if we win the championship or not. If if we don't win the championship, I think there's a higher chance of her coming to New York. If we do win it, I think she stays in Dallas and picks up a bigger contract because she is on a one year, right? Dallas picking up Kiki Ariafin, at this point, it wouldn't be too convoluted, but I just, Dallas, they don't... <laughs> I don't think they know what they're doing there, man. Their team just is not a well-built team. It could be an OP team. It could be Connecticut Sun in 2021 type team. Like JJ, Bree, Alyssa, Tom. Like they could be nice, but they just don't know what they're doing. So I don't want a talent like a Kiki Ariafin going there. Like Kiki Ariafin is probably reminds me more so of like a Neko Gumake with double the athleticism get her to seattle shit like get her a mentor don't please please don't go to dallas boy dallas purgatory bro moving on number three we got anisa morrow uh going to chicago um joining forces with angel reese that would be cool you need some offense now one all those boards are getting cleaned up, if I'm being real. Anissa Morrow and, and Angel Reese in the paint, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, she is a 6'1". She's 6'1". So the thing about Anissa Morrow is she has to play the wing, I think. She has to play the wing. And maybe you can run a little tandem for Angel Reese and Anissa at the 4 and 5. Maybe they could tap into that. But Angel Reese most likely is running at the 4. You can put Angel at the 3 as well. She's athletic enough to be there. Um, they would clean up the glass. They would clean up the glass. Ain't nobody getting a rebound against them. Camilla, Angel, Anissa. That shit would not work without a facilitating guard. If you don't have a guard that can command this team... And share this basketball. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of defense. Anissa Morrow can score. She can hoop. Like don't get me wrong. She can put the ball in. But if she's coming in shooting twenty four percent from three, what are we? And she's going to be the starting three. Probably not starting, but she's going to be the three at that three spot shooting twenty four percent from three. It's it not gonna work. That not gonna happen. You understand? So Anissa Morrow, yeah, Chicago could use her, but I don't think Anissa Morrow is going that high because Chicago needs maybe maybe they do pick up Anissa Morrow and then try to find a guard that could fit there. Probably Zaya Cook. <laughs> I have my reasons. That wouldn't be a bad pick, but they need a guard to make that gel because that's a lot of bad spacing on that team. That is freaking Left on the D-pad, crowd the paint. That's You need some spacing on that court, bro. Because Angel, unless Angel get a jumper, unless Camilla tap into a mid-range jumper, you ain't got no space in there. You need three-point shooters around them. 
Anissa Mar has to change in her entire game to become a three-point shooter. Number four, Washington Mystics picking up AZ Fudd. Uh, now, on Tankathon, the only reason I haven't mentioned the Tankathon yet is because Tankathon has the same thing for the first three picks. Um, and then they have Olivia Miles going for instead of AZ Fudd. AZ Fudd, I think, isn't going to go as high in the WNBA draft. I think we're going to see more of the Pow Pow, Amor, Maddie Westfeld going a little bit higher than AZ Fudd because AZ Fudd is a, um, she's not undersized, but she runs a lot of two in college just because she actually is a true shooting guard. Um, so they're going to struggle with where to put her, I think, in the W. Because she needs she needs to have the ball in her hands a lot this college season because she has to be 5'10", you're going to be thrown into that point guard, that one guard position. She's not going to get to run a lot of two. She can, but she's not going to get to run a lot of two in the WNBA. So she's going to be thrown into that point guard position where she hasn't really been playing a lot of her college career. So I don't think AZ Fudd goes that high. It would be great to have her here in D.C., that wouldn't be a bad pickup. Ariel Atkins, AZ Fudd, sniping. That wouldn't be bad. But at her size, 5'10", shooting, she's not gonna be playing two guard. She's not. She's gonna have to she's gonna have to change her game to play point. Number five, they got Olivia Miles going to the Valks. <sighs> Here's the thing. Olivia Miles, that'd be cool. Don't get it messed up. That'd be cool. But Olivia Miles is needed in Chicago, bro. That facilitating point guard that can score. <laughs> Good luck, Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. Oh, okay. Hold on. Because I think Chicago has their eyes set. They have their eyes set on somebody. Remember when I made that video about the Marina Mabry trade back then? I was just like, okay. Um, they're tanking the rest of the season. Chicago's tanking the rest of the season by making this trade. They were, and I said they're looking for somebody either in this class or the next class. But I think they're looking for someone in this class. They're looking for somebody, and I'm not. I don't think it's Olivia Miles. I don't think they're looking for Olivia Miles. You get what I'm saying? But I do think. I do think Olivia Miles best is the best fit for that team. I could understand if they're looking for Anissa Morrow. Like, they're just like, okay, we're gonna tank this season and then we're gonna pick up Anissa Morrow in this draft class, pair with Ella. Like, I could see that inner workings happening, but Olivia Miles should be the third pick. If, if Chicago has it, Olivia Miles should be going to Chicago. She should be going to Chicago. That is the player you need. I don't think you want to gamble and say, okay, we'll pick up Anissa Morrow and try to, oh, sorry, Miles to Chicago and pick up Anissa Morrow and say, okay, let's see if we can find a guard that can fit this. Do you want the the smaller puzzle piece first or do you want the bigger puzzle piece first? You know what I mean? Olivia Miles would be the bigger puzzle piece. Anissa Morrow is going to go somewhere else, sure, but Chicago, I think, I do think Olivia Miles needs to be going to Chicago. I don't think she'd be going to the Valkyries anyway, but let's say, let's say, um, let's say she went to Chicago at the third pick, right? At that fourth pick, this is an AZ FUD. So at this fourth pick, I think it's Olivia Miles going to, sorry. I'm confusing myself. Olivia Miles going to Chicago. AZ Fuzz and I at that fourth pick. Who's going four to DC? Probably Anissa Morrow. Probably Anissa Morrow goes to DC. Links up with Aaliyah Edwards. Would we pick up Anissa Morrow? Who do we need in DC? We need like a, a point guard. Sykes, Atkins. We got Jade Melbourne. We need like a point guard. DC might go after an Amor or Pow Pow. Yeah, DC might go after like an Amor or so. 
you don't really need forwards. You did pick up Aaliyah. You got Aaliyah Edwards, Dolson, Shakira. They don't really need forwards. They could go after a Matty Westbelt. That'd be kind of that'd be kind of dope. But I think DC is picking up a point guard. So if Olivia Miles is off the table, they're probably going. I think they're probably going Amor, Pow Pow, Ashley Barker, Felia, maybe like a guard. You know what I mean? So I don't think I don't know if Olivia Miles goes to the Valkyries. I don't think Olivia Miles goes to the Valkyries. But I'm not sure which player does go to the Valkyries. If if the Valks have the fifth spot, like are you gonna pick AZ Fudd? No disrespect to AZ, love AZ wife and all that, but like I don't know if you pick her up as your first as your cause your first pick for the Valks for your expansion team, you're going to want to pick up somewhat of a fan favorite. You want to fill those seats. That's tough. Not a lot of players know about Olivia Miles. Notre Dame, uh, not a lot of people know about Olivia Miles. You know? Uh, anyway, number six on ESPN, uh, the Mystics from Atlanta. Remember, um, the Mystics have two top, two, two first round picks. They got Cheyenne Sellers from Maryland going to the Mystics. Yeah, I don't think so. Not when, not when Sonia Citron, Rory Harmon, Maddie Westwell, Georgia A. Martina, Pow Pow, Raven Johnson, Sarah Ashley Barker, Deanna Neepkins, Aoka Lee, Layla Felia. Not when all those names are still on the list. Hell no, Cheyenne Sellers ain't going top six. What? Again, no disrespect, but no. Maddie Westwell is still available at six. What are what are we doing? What are we doing, Mystics? So Mystics, you know who has the chance to have a really good draft? The Mystics, DC. They can pick up a guard and a big, maybe a wing. They can pick up two guards. They can pick up another shooter. They could go Tahina Pow Pow and Maddie. They could go Tahina Pow Pow, Sonya Citra. Well, can they go? AZ Fudd if they want to, Olivia Miles, Anissa Morrow. No, 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 no. Olivia Miles, Maddie Westbelt, pick up the Notre Dame teammates. Olivia Miles, Sonia Citron. Mystics got a lot of options. Mystics have a lot of options, but I don't think this is going to be Cheyenne Sellers. On Tankathon at number at number six, they got Sonia Citron going. And I believe that's that's the correct, yeah. Now, number seven, New York Liberty. We still have the seventh pick from Phoenix, Dominique Malonga. If you all have seen that video of the the girl going pump fake like an open gym, pump fake, dribble, spin, move, right hand dunk, that's Dominique Malonga. Where everyone was talking about like Victoria Webinyama, that's Dominique. Okay. She's from France, center, six six. Um this is a name that's probably going to get lost with all the college names, but this is a very highly touted prospect. And I'm not sure which team is going to be the one to pick her up. I do think she gets picked up first round, maybe early second round, but I'm not sure which team does it. I'm really not sure which team does it. Do we need a Dominique? We need another four. We need another four. We got Niara as our backup five. Leone has been a great wing for us. Sab has to has to play the one. We could use another wing. We could use another wing, but we really need another four. Yeah, we need another four. So if Maddie Westwell is still available at seven, I'm going. I want Maddie. I want a shooter. I want a shooter or like a sizable shooter. There's there's a player I have I've followed since Oregon, and she has like really good shooting form. Like the ball, her ball arc is like that shit go above the shot clock when she shoots. I don't know if y'all know this name, but Taya Hansen, Taya Hansen from Oregon. I just see her. I see her on the Liberty. That is a floor spacer if you need one, yo. But there are so many names like the Reagan Richardsons, Talia Van, uh, Talia Van Oafen. There are so many names that are just not on this not on this list that that could go to these teams, you know, and just 
for us, this this pick at seven for the Liberty, it's going to become more clear after this playoff run. After this postseason, we'll we'll know what we need and we'll know who we're going to pick up. But if Matty Westbelt is still available at seven, that's our three four right there. <laughs> that is our three four right there. That is our backup four. Matty Westbell, floor spacer, versatile, big, can handle, can set screens, because still we don't really like setting screens anyway. She strong, good finisher, mid-range, three-point corner. Matty what Boy, if Maddie Westbell is still available at seven, we better pick her up. I better not see no friggery if Maddie Westbell is still available at seven. Okay? We need to pick her up. I just, I'm not off that train. Um, number eight for ESPN for the Indiana Fever, they got Janaya Barker on Tankathon. Janaya Barker from US, uh, UCLA. Great game. Uh, very versatile, big. And at number eight on Tankathon, they have Matty Westbelt. Like, yeah, no, that's not happening. That's not happening. Seventh seed, seventh spot. New York has the seventh spot and they pick up Rory Harmon. What, what are we trying to do? Drugs. That's drugs. That's a druggy pick. Not with Matty Westbelt potentially going eight to Indiana. To Indiana. No, hell no. Hell, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Notre Dame is going to be tough as hell this season. But Indiana, uh, Janiah Barker. At number nine on ESPN, Rory Harmon to the Seattle Storm. On Tankathon, Georgia Amor to the Seattle Storm. At number nine, you're going to have Nika, Sky, Georgia Amor. How you're going to get along with that, I don't know. In Seattle... I don't know what it is, but Seattle just looks like they're out there with fear. <laughs> Seattle looks like they're just out there with no purpose. I've never, I know the team is new, but I've never seen a team just look like they just have no purpose being out there. They're just out there, not even trying to win. Like, what is your objective? I don't know. They just on the court, shooting, running. So Georgia Amor low-key would be a waste of talent on that team. You picked up Nika just for her. Yes, she had a rookie year. People are like, oh, she needs to play and whatnot. And I'm just like, bro, this is the life of most rookies in NBA, WNBA. So what is Georgia Amor going to, going to do there? Like they rode the veterans all season. I don't know. Number 10 on ESPN and number 10 on Tankathon, they got... Tahina Pow Pow going to the Chicago sky. I don't know if Tahina Pow Pow falls this low, if I'm being real. I think Tahina Pow Pow really is going to have going to switch places with AZ Fudd. I think AZ, even if they both have good college um, senior years, I think I think it's gonna be Tahina Pow Pow that switches places with AZ Fudd. I think more teams are going to be high on Pow Pow than AZ Fudd. Even if they both have like decent ends to their college careers. But Chicago, yeah, this I think this is more of like a fan feeling. Like a lot of people want Tahina to go to Chicago, you know, link up with Cam, um, be the be the point guard that Chicago needs, but that I don't she would fit, but I don't think she would be the answer. She'd be a nice piece to the puzzle, but you're basically bringing in a player that's like you need a facilitating guard. Tahina isn't really that. Tahina averaged 3.7 assists. No, 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 no. You need a you need a 7-8 assist. Tahina to me is like she's coming in with like a Rachel Banham skill set. Probably a little bit better, like a rich man's Rachel Banham. Like medium lotto, you know? She'd be she'd be a good piece for Chicago. She just wouldn't nah need I think. Tahina, yeah, she's a modern PG, but she's not really a modern PG. You need Olivia Miles. <laughs> you need Olivia Miles there. Number 11 um, on ESPN. Sonia Citron going number 11. Sonia's not falling that low. Hell no. And on Tankathon, they got Raven Johnson number 11. We did not see Raven Johnson um, in, the last, in the last mock draft. So it's surprising to actually see her here. 
If Minnesota, let me tell y'all something. If somehow Sonia Citron falls to 11 and Minnesota gets her, just give them the next three chips, okay? Number 12 from um, Phoenix Mercury. Now we had Georgia Amor going nine on Tankathon, but for number 12 on ESPN, Georgia Amor goes number 12. I think that's probably going to be where she falls around actually. And on Tankathon, they still got Gianna Neepkins at 12. That used to be Ayoka Lee at number 12 on our on our last mock draft but here it's gianna neepkins i think aoka lee goes first round i don't think she gets kicked to second round not over raven johnson sorry raven johnson not over aoka lee i don't think i think a i think raven johnson is second round but i think aoka lee is going to be in the first round i do think the winners there are two teams that really have the chance to change their franchise and change their franchise trajectory i'd say two or three teams third like start let's start at three third three (laughs) you got indiana two you have chicago and at one you have the mystics mystics are going to have a lotto pick and they have the sixth pick chicago is going to have a lotto pick and the tenth pick And then the Fever are going to have the eighth pick. Those teams are going to be the three teams to keep your eye on. Um, Other than that, that's going to do it for this mock draft video. I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not missing anything, but I just, I just feel like, I feel like the situations for these teams to come in, for these players to come into, it's going to be, it's going to be really, it's going to be really confusing. And like really stressful for no reason. But these rookies are really going to come into certain situations where teams just don't don't really know what the hell they're doing, bro. And the the lack of initiative I see from a lot of these teams is what kind of like has me worried for the incoming class. You know, let me see the trajectory you're on. Mystics are on a good trajectory. Indiana, great trajectory. New York, you know. But for the some of the some of the teams that are like struggling, at least Chicago, you know, Chicago's building and you can see that they're serious about their rebuilding. But for the other teams, it's like, uh, I don't know what y'all doing, man. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section. I know this video is pretty lengthy, but the mock draft videos are usually fun and they're fun to spark conversation, especially with the college season incoming. So let me know what y'all think. It's been your boy. I'm out of here. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Peace.